Okay, let's just go ahead and start this thing hot and hard. Is there a God? If there is a God, what kind of God is this God? Is this God good? What's this God doing? What's this God doing with us? What are we here for? We've got some time. Our days are numbered. What are we going to do with this time? Surely it has some meaning. What's the meaning of my life? Do I have anything to do with putting some meaning into this life? Jesus. I've heard about him. It was a long time ago on the other side of the planet that he lived. What am I supposed to do with Jesus? Seems to be a lot of evidence for him. A lot of people still worldwide by the billions believe him. Do I need to? Is he really relevant to me? Talking about Jesus, I mean, most everything I know about Jesus really has its roots in this thing right here, this, this book called a Bible. Boy, that thing's really old. Does that really have any relevance or meaning to me today? I open it up and I read it and it's not hard for me to come across a great many things very quickly that are very hard to understand. And even the things that I do understand, no small number of them are hard to accept. What am I gonna do about all of this? Glad you asked. Can I share a scripture with you? Just a very brief reading from the Bible here. It's found in the book of Acts, chapter 8. It's the latter half of that chapter, verses 26 through 39 to be specific. I want you to lean into this story and put yourself in the story. Three main characters, four perhaps you might say. There's a man named Philip. He's a preacher, an Ethiopian. Oh, he's a high government official. In fact, he's in charge of all the government's money. There's God himself working behind the scenes. And then there's someone who gets mentioned. Good news. His name is Jesus. An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Go south on the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So Philip got up and went. And on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the entire treasury of the queen, Candace, over all of Ethiopia. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and now was on his way home. And as he was sitting in his chariot, he was reading aloud from the scroll of Isaiah the prophet. The Holy Spirit of God told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. So Philip ran up to that chariot, and when he arrived, he heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. So Philip asked him, Do you understand what you're reading? <laughs> How can I unless someone guides me? So he invited Philip up into the chariot with him, to sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. Like a lamb before the shearer, he remained silent. He didn't open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of all justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. And so the eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, of whom does the prophet speak? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very same passage of Scripture and shared with him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled further down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What's to prevent me from being baptized here and now? So he commanded the chariot to stop, and he and Philip both went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit of God suddenly took Philip away and the, and the eunuch never saw him again. But the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. Love the way that story ends. That's the way we want our life to be, isn't it? To go on our way rejoicing. To rejoice in the Lord. That's what this Ethiopian was doing. And why? Well, part of it, it was because he had been scratching his head. 
not understanding what this book is about, and he was yearning for guidance. And God had been providing some guidance for him. Angels and his own Holy Spirit, among other matters that could be named. If the curtain had been pulled back, we could have seen these ones, as it were, at work, doing good, arranging for this moment. The eternal God, keenly aware of this Ethiopian and having good in mind for him, providing all along what this man needed to know, to grasp, to find real meaning in life. The Ethiopian, his heart, he was open and looking for God. And God didn't let him down. God had been looking for the Ethiopian long before he went down in the water in the name of Jesus. And part of what God had provided, you might say the centerpiece on the table, was his own son, Jesus Christ. Centuries before the Ethiopian lived, Isaiah the prophet had lived and wrote those words, and the Spirit of God had been working with Isaiah to pen those words. And now we, two millennium later than the Ethiopian, we're still reading, hearing the words of Isaiah the prophet, the scribblings of the Spirit of God. We're seeing the hand of God working good in our life. We're being exposed to the light, His Son Jesus Christ. Is He relevant to us? What will we do with Him? How will we know that this is what we need to do with our life? That is, to embrace Jesus. This Ethiopian had a great heart. He discerned that God had been working good for him, and he saw in Jesus the ultimate expression of this good. And so he wanted to be as close to Jesus as possible. He wanted to embrace him, to emulate him. Jesus had been crucified. This was his suffering. He had been buried. All justice had been deprived of him. He died unjustly. But God, the good and active and working and loving God, raised his son from the dead. This is what baptism is all about. And the eunuch wants to plunge into the depths of the life of Jesus, to be all about him in every possible way, to submerge himself and to rise up to live a whole new life all about him because now he understands that this God has been wanting to give him real meaning in life. This God had been providing for him all along. This God wants him to be included. He's an Ethiopian. He's very different from Philip. He's very different from most of the world in which the Bible is written. God is interested in every person, the message seems to say. There's no one beyond his reach if we're willing to reach out for him and find him, God won't let us down any more than he did the Ethiopian. Indeed, we might discern that looking back, we could see how that God was providing all along for us to begin a walk with him, a closer walk with him, so that we could find out what real life is all about and discern just how genuinely good God is. And so we have the privilege the opportunity called time to be like him, to live good and to do good toward others. I believe God provides. I believe God wants us to be as urgent and active about seeking him as he is active and urgent in reaching out to us. I believe God wants to include everyone in his family. He wants people to come together in him and not just everyone to come together in Him, but God's drilling for depth there too. Intimacy, you might say. Will you find this intimacy and this inclusion? Will you use the best possible means of your time, the days, your life? You can only do so when you begin with a God who is good, who provides for you. Embrace Him, my friend. If I can help you come to know Jesus a bit better, please contact me. Grace and peace be with us all.